This UCSD TV program is a presentation of University of California Television for educational and non commercial use only. On this edition of On Beyond, UC San Diego engineering expert Jose Restrepo assessed the effects of Chile's Great Malo River earthquake of 2010. Professor Estrepo, Jose, thank you very much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to, to come and share with us. There are many things uh, in common, in a way, with Chile and California in terms of construction and the experience of earthquakes, basically. What, what are some of those things that draw us to look for information from events like this? Chile has been growing at a very fast rate for the past 20 years. They have done a lot of uh, new developments, very heavily industrialized these days. So it puts us in an earthquake lab in Chile that actually has a lot of parallels to California. What was the magnitude of the quake and, and where does it rank again in the historical record of strong motion earthquakes? Uh, moment magnitude 8.8 .8, and it ranks in the first five. Can you give us an idea of how much more powerful this quake was, say, than the Northridge earthquake? Let's say that we have the Northridge earthquake of 1994. The energy liberated could be equivalent to 660, 700 Hiroshima pumps, very large. And this earthquake in Chile is huge. It's a million bombs. It's huge, huge. What was the duration of the earthquake? The duration of the earthquake is of the order of two minutes. Two minutes mm -hmm. of shaking like that. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> 10 seconds, 20 seconds seems like an eternity when you're going through an earthquake in two minutes. Uh, that's unimaginable. It's, uh, endless. What is very uh, interesting is what we call is the spectral displacements that were observed in the earthquake. And it, this means that you have a building with a period of about two seconds, okay, back and forth, it takes two seconds. That building could have experienced plus or minus um, five, six, or even seven feet from end to end, okay? These are very large values. Give us a, an overview of the, the affected area and how that relates in size to California and how we might be able to relate to how big an area that was and how intense the shaking was. We're talking about a strip of land which could be 110 kilometers, let's say 80 miles wide by about 600 kilometers or 400 miles long. It's mainly you, we start seeing a strong shaking and damage in Los Angeles, and we can move all the way to San Luis Obispo, Monterrey, and end up in San Francisco. So it's as if that strong shaking, the same strong shaking that was felt in, in Los Angeles would be felt in San Francisco. Correct. It's as if uh, here we might experience a big quake in Los Angeles, and people in San Francisco might feel a shake, but it's as if both places were hit. It, both places and every, everywhere in between. Everything in between. Yeah. Now, you went specifically to assess structures because your specialty is a, is a structural engineer and structures for dealing with seismic stresses. Briefly describe um, where you went in Chile to observe damage. The city of Santiago, the capital, uh, also in Valparaíso and Viña del Mar, who are right at the top of the strong intensity uh, motion, um, and all the way south to Concepcion and up to about 100 kilometers south of Concepcion in a little place called Cañete. So I inspected all those places. Tell us about the context and the nature of buildings and construction and the building boom in Chile. Chile has, has in the past 20 years has grown into a developed nation with a lot of tall buildings. And we are talking about 600 to 1,000 buildings that could be 15, 20, and even 30 stories high that were shaking in, that were in the very strong intensity shaking. The Chilean practice of building is associated with the American practice. So they use pre pretty much the same American codes that we use here. So it's a, it's a great experience for the United States to go and see what happened in there because those buildings are buildings that could have been built here with some differences. So these are new buildings of new construction type and a lot of them. So you get a good cross-direction, almost, almost like a, a good sample. Uh, very good. A very good statistical sample of how buildings behave under this kind of shape. These are mainly reinforced concrete uh, wall buildings mm -hmm. uh, of the kind of buildings that we are beginning to build now in California for residential areas. So they don't have the beams and columns that we tend to have in, in the older buildings, but they do to have long walls like, and they go all the way up. We know um, for a long time that these buildings can be pretty resilient, and they were. 
Yeah. These buildings were had, had never been designed for these very huge demands, yet they took it. So show us, show us yes. an example. So we see a lot of damage at the base of these walls. These walls are flexing, they are bending, mm -hmm. and obviously they, they develop large strains in, in the concrete and in the steel. So the earthquake came along, it moved the building to one side, the bars stretched, they came back, it, r it basically ripped through the concrete because those bars could not stay put. They buckle and rip through the concrete. So it's very notorious, it's very endemic, this kind of failure. So this is the kind of failure you're seeing here, yeah. is the bars being pushed out of the Push concrete. Push out and buckled and fractured. Actually, we see a lot of bars that have been fractured, which poses a challenge when you're going to repair these buildings. But what is remarkable is that in spite of that, they were okay, the buildings were okay. They, they, everyone got out of the building and and many of these buildings can be repaired. Do you have some other examples? Yes, yeah, we sure. also observed um, shear failure in buildings. Mm -hmm. and, and what we're talking with shear is this diagonal crack and it's when you fracture one of your legs, okay, and, and your bone goes, has a skew fracture. Mm -hmm. So you cannot, you cannot support your own weight. So, so what is this example, this building? You see the diagonal crack here. Yeah. Now is this a is this a panel wall that goes up the entire and goes entire the entire height of the building? It's one contiguous mm -hmm. piece of one concrete. continuous piece of concrete. This is what we call a shear wall. There's something very particular about this building. It was it's brand new. Brand new. I had not been occupied. It hadn't even been occupied. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that there was in a metropolitan area of six million people, only eight people died. Where what was that example? In Alto Rio in Concepcion, it's a, it's a multi-story building structure that did collapse. It's the only building that collapsed. Completely. Is this a newer building, an older building? It's a newer building. Mm -hmm. Probably, uh, it's, it's occupied, but it's probably two years old. Mm -hmm. And what was the failure there? We, we, we have seen now from the records very close to where this building is that the demands were far, far from what the code stipulated. Mm -hmm. Probably twice, if not three times. Mm -hmm. So this building came down, but that doesn't explain why the buildings next door did not come down. Though many of the buildings fared well, and, and on, the, on the face of it, uh, modern engineering did much to s for life safety and saved a lot of lives in this phenomenal earthquake. Um, s buildings are left uninhabitable, or they're left that they need to be, uh, these imposes some challenges for reconstruction. Can you Very much that? so. Is what do you do with a building that is left with one degree of tilt, or has had a partial collapse in a densely developed area? So that building can come down in aftershock, mm -hmm. or if it's in how in, not in how it all anymore because it's tilting because you cannot push it back, you need to demolish it. And if it's in, in a precarious situation, how are you going to do that? It's a very important issue for us. How are we going to demolish it? And the problem is too is what happens to our neighbors? They, not only the building has to be uh, evacuated, but the neighbors have to evacuate themselves because they are exposed to the to this gigantic hazard of a building that can collapse on top of them. We see examples of that in Concepcion. You see a, a building here that has had a partial collapse and it's in, it's in an area of downtown that is as dense as what we see here in San Diego. And it's a 30 story building and we need to find a way to demolish it. I understand that the airport was, was very severely damaged. The airport experienced structural and non-structural damage. Some of the non-structural elements came down. Walkways and Walkways. air conditioning, ducting, lighting. Everything came down. The lifts to access the building were, had a structural damage. This is, a, this is a lifeline. This is very important to the country. So you had some uh, examples of industrial failures? Industrial failures, in general, they, they behave uh, fine mm -hmm. with some punctual examples. The cement factory in Concepcion that had some damages in the chimneys and the chimneys came down on top of other things so you have an, a domino effect on the system. So um, when you need more cement to repair, you don't have the cement. The steel factory, when you need more reinforcing steel to repair, the, 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 the furnace of the, of the steel factory cracked. So it has to be fully replaced. One of the devastating con consequences obviously was tsunami. I know this isn't your area of focus and there were tsunami experts, but what, what did you observe and see in this regard? We flew from Viña del Mar all the way to Concepcion and obviously you see the devastating effect of the tsunami. What is this image here? This is very close to Constitución, mm -hmm. which is more or less close to the epicentral region. And you can see here 
the actual coast, and you can see the area where the water penetrated, probably one or two miles inside. This is very flat. And whatever house you had here or there is gone. Everything is gone. And you see again the same effect here, but now, now in Constitución, you see a lot of dwellings here have disappeared, a lot of dwellings that have disappeared completely. Mm -hmm. And in terms of ports and, and harbors? In ports and harbors, we have um, very good results, with some exceptions. They, they did very well. But where the main problem was, was in the Navy post, uh, in Talcahuano, where there they had the submarines, mm -hmm. and they could not do anything. So the submarines were actually upli uplifted completely from the port. And they were left high and dry on dry yes. land? Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. well, there is no way we can take any pictures. It was completely close to. So despite the, hum the tragedy, the human loss, and the immense amount of damage and the impact this is going to make on, this, is, this has made on the Chilean economy, the, kind of the silver lining is that modern engineering, that the progressive engineering and the research that has been going on in the last decades, decade or so, has made a significant impact. I mean, if you compare the kind of progressive engineering that's being done in Chile and here to older engineering, places like Haiti. China. The lack of engineering in Haiti, they, they basically happen this year that we can have a very good comparison of two earthquakes with strong intensities, one a mega earthquake, the other one is, an, is a large earthquake, and one with devastating effects in the community because basically at about 8%, 8 to 10% of the people die in, in Port Prince. And that's very large. And in Chile, we're talking about 1%. It's very, very low, 500 people, and most of them die as a result of all the construction, the tsunami, and only eight people die in water buildings. So it's, it's something that we say, oh, it could have been better in Chile, I wish, but it's tremendous, it's, it's very good progress. Could have been much, much worse. What implications will, will your assessments have on the future of design codes in Chile and elsewhere, including here? I think we have learned that um, Chile can experience earthquakes that have low frequency content and they are going to push those buildings way beyond what they have experienced in the past. This 8.8 .8 managed to challenge the building. So now we need to work on the demands. Are those demands going to change? Yes or no? Is the detailing going to change? And the, re and the answer to that is obviously going to change. The detailing has to improve because we cannot have these buildings damaging the building. Even though they responded okay, they could have done much better with a little, little incremental investment. So we are moving in that direction. Now you are a, size, a structural design expert and, and very familiar with California and, and how things are built here. Could you project if that same kind of shaking, that same kind of event were to happen here in California, how we would have fared from your knowledge of, of, mm -hmm. of structures and the way things are built here? In my opinion is all, all those older structures pre-1970, they will fare not so well. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of them in San Francisco, a lot of them in, in Los Angeles that have not been retrofitted yet. Uh, for modern buildings, we will experience quite a bit of damage as well in the non-structural elements. Mm -hmm. Our codes have been tightened lately, but we have a lot of building stocks that have partitions and have very loose overhanging uh, air conditioning units, piping that can come down and interact one another and it's very important for us to look into this. I think it's important to learn from the Chilean experience to see how we can influence the codes here. We need to see if what we are trying to do with our code, as particularly with the concrete code, is, is what we want as a society as a whole. And it may be that when we have a strong shaking in California, we may see some, some, some needs to, to improve because we have seen some of them already in Chile. Well, thank you very much for taking your time. I know you're extraordinarily busy, especially with assessing the number of earthquakes that have been occurring recently and your many demands on your expertise. So we appreciate it very thank much. Thank you, Rich. Mm -hmm. Thanks.